empower me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. The devotion of hearing. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. 1 Samuel 3 and 10. Just because I have listened carefully and intently to one thing from God does not mean that I will listen to everything he says. I show God my lack of love and respect for him by the insensitivity of my heart and mind towards what he says. If I love my friend, I will instinctively understand what he wants. And Jesus said, You are my friends. John chapter 15 verse 14. Have I obeyed some command of my Lord's this week? If I had realized that it was a command of Jesus, I would not have deliberately disobeyed it. But most of us show incredible disrespect to God because we don't even hear him. He might as well never have spoken to us. The goal of my spiritual life is such close identification with Jesus Christ that I will always hear God and know that God always hears me. That's John chapter 11 verse 41. If I am united with Jesus Christ, I hear God all the time through the devotion of hearing. A flower, a tree, or a servant of God may convey God's message to me. What hinders me from hearing is my attention to other things. It is not that I don't want to hear God, but I am not devoted in the right areas of my life. I am devoted to things and even to service and my own convictions. God may say whatever he wants, but I just don't hear him. The attitude of a child of God should always be, speak for your servant hears. If I have not developed and nurtured this devotion of hearing, I can only hear God's voice at certain times. At other times, I become deaf to him because my attention is to other things. Things which I think I must do. This is not living the life of a child of God. Have you heard God's voice today? Let me say that again. At other times, I become deaf to him because my attention is to other things. He's talking about distractions. Things which I think I must do. And this is not living the life of a child of God. Have you heard God's voice today? Wow. What a simple word the devotion of hearing found in first Samuel chapter 3 in 10 Lord empower me give me the ability to hear you and be devoted to hearing you as you said in first Samuel 3 and verse 10 speak Lord for your servant in listening. Are you listening to God? Your servant is listening today. And this is about the story of Samuel's conception and birth and God's special call on his life. So many of you believe that God has a call on your life. And he has become beloved by many 
the heartfelt prayer of a childless woman whose pleading request for a baby son was answered and who was faithful in returning the child back to the Lord once he was weaned has rejoiced many hearts and encouraged many souls. True to her word, the mother of Samuel, Hannah, sang her own magnificent to the Lord. He granted her petition and she kept her promise. Do you keep your promise? And gave her precious little son back to the Lord, joyfully proclaiming, for as long as he lives, he is dedicated to the Lord. And so this young boy remained at the tabernacle or the church of the Lord with Eli, the old prophet. And there Samuel worshiped the Lord. It suggested that Samuel was about 12 years old or in his early teens. Don't let anyone talk about you when you know God has giving you a call upon your life as a teenager, as a young. God called me at the age of 12. And I still tell the same story. God called me to teach the word. Now, if God calls you, who will you believe? Are you going to believe man? Or are you going to believe God? I believe God. You don't let anybody shut you down just because you're a child. He was called in his early age. When God called him with an audible voice, he heard it, called him into his service. Because of the poor spiritual state of the nation, prophetic vision and dreams were rare in those days, just like they're rare today. Why was it saying that it was rare? Because of the poor spiritual state of the nation or of the kingdom of God. The people of God have gone astray. So the prophetic vision and dreams were rare in those days. However, unlike the spiritually weary old Eli, who was supposed to be maintaining everything, it said whose eyes were dim and his love for the Lord had grown lukewarm. What does God say about lukewarmness? He said, I would rather that you be hot or cold. I don't want you lukewarm. He said, because when you get into my mouth, I'm going to forcibly spit you out of my mouth. If you are lukewarm, you're not hot for the Lord. And he said, I'd rather have you cold than to have you right in the middle. But Eli had grown lukewarm. And the young man heard God's voice clearly in the night hour and responded quickly and obediently. God was waiting to tell Samuel that God's judgment was ready to fall on the house of Le of Eli. Is God standing ready to tell you anything? It said the judgment was about to fall on the house of Eli. I'm sorry, but judgment is coming to the house of God now. Judgment is coming upon this earth. Judgment is coming upon the world. And God is trying to get his prophets, his seers, his apostles in place so they can see and they can hear. It said judgment was falling on the house because of the shocking apostasy into which the priesthood had fallen, the state in which the ministry had fallen. And because his two sons, Eli's sons, were sexually promiscuous, and they were supposed to be attending the house of God, God was waiting to reveal to Samuel what he was going to do, and that he was going to do a new thing in Israel. Something that would cause the ears of all who heard it to tingle. And so one night Samuel was lying down. Some of you know the story. 
but I'm going to tell a little of it. Samuel was lying down in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was located. God's call came as daylight was beginning to dawn. For the lamp of God had almost gone out. The lamps were supposed to be attended every night. The lampstand in the sanctuary was kept burning night and day and was no doubt ready to be replenished with oil. How many of you all need oil in your vessels? It's reminding me of the foolish virgin and the wise virgin. There was ten of them. And five had oil and five did not. And the five that did not have enough said, give us some of your oil. And the wise ones had to say, no, because if we give you our oil, we won't have enough. Don't you know a lot of folks are going to get caught? Because they have not replenished their oil in the spirit. But God was waiting to pour his own light into this spiritually alert little boy. To whom he was to entrust many things. But as the flickering lamp of God was burning low, the Lord called to the boy, but he did not recognize the voice of God. Samuel thought it was the old priest calling to him, and obediently he went to the sleeping Eli to find out why he was needed. So many of you are running. I'm sorry, I'm hearing this in my spirit. You're running to people, pastors, preachers, and folks who are sleeping. They are not on their post. They are not able to hear from the Lord. He ran in there being obedient. Some of you are obedient to your calling, to your ministry. But you're obedient to leaders who have gone astray. He went to Eli to find out why he was needed. As soon as he heard the call, Samuel ran to Eli answering, Here I am. Or he am I. The old man was slow to realize the voice that was hailing Samuel was none other than the Lord, who was calling to him in the night. So Eli went back to bed twice, but eventually realized what was happening and told Samuel that if he calls or if he is to call you again, Samuel was to respond and listen to all that God had to say. Say, here I am, Lord. So in today's verse we read, Then the Lord came and stood and called as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, for your servant is listening. Are you listening to God? I keep having that question rise up since the last time I spoke with you. Are you listening to God? The words that God spoke to Samuel that night were words of shock and horror. Judgment was to come on Eli for the lethargy in his religion, but also on his two evil sons who blasphemed the name of the Lord, participated in gross immorality, and caused shame and disgrace to come upon the sacred position of the Levitical priesthood. It must have been terrifying, yet wonderful for young Samuel to hear God talking to him in the early hours of the morning. And discovered that he was to be used as a prophetic voice to the people of God. Samuel was ready. Are you ready? Samuel was willing to hear the word of the Lord. And responded with words that many others have uttered down through centuries of time. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I'm listening today. Are you listening today? The Lord is no respecter of persons. And the eyes of the Lord continue. 
They travel to and fro looking for a man or a woman who has a listening ear, who has a trusting heart and a willing spirit that is ready to say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I sense that in the bottom of my heart. Speak, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Your servant is listening. The Lord is ready to use anyone who is willing to become an instrument to be used in the furtherance of God's truth. No one is too young or too old for God to use. Both men and women, the word of God said, rich and poor, Jew and Gentile are all people who he will use if they are ready to what? Listen and obey his voice and trust in him with their whole heart. Father, I thank you today for my friends, my family, my loved ones, my acquaintances, my co-workers on this line today. Father, thank you for the many lessons and encouragement that we can gain from this story of Samuel, the little boy born to Hannah, whose life was dedicated to you and who grew into a man who listened to your voice and obeyed the call on his life to do your bidding to do your will, to follow your instructions. Lord, open our eyes to hear. Lord, let us hear you speaking to us and use us, Lord, for your service. Father, I pray in whatever way you will for your greater praise. God, I give you glory today. And I give you thanksgiving. For your scripture, speak, Lord. For your servant is listening, God, I thank you. So often we get distracted and the enemy comes in. He rides in right during the time where we're listening, listening to you. Father, I thank you that eyes are being opened right now. Ears are being opened right now. Tongues are being loosed right now that they will speak what you hear them speak once once they what they hear you speak to their people and to the people that you have assigned them to go to father i thank you that there is a devotion in hearing your word father we thank you that devotion which is something a lot of people don't talk about anymore being devoted to anything we're loose and fancy free but god wants us to regain our devotion to the thing that he's called in your life. Father, I thank you because you're forgiving sins right now. Father, I thank you that you're forgiving broken hearts and those that brought things upon themselves. Father, I'm hearing that right now. So many people are going through, but they brought it upon themselves. But you are still a forgiving God. You are still a loving God. God. And God says to you today, he's trying to speak to you. And so often he speaks to you and you stop and say, something said this to me and something said that to me. If you are a child of God, you are a believer. You must stop that false humility by saying something said. You don't want to seem spooky. And you don't want to seem like you're out of order. And you don't want to say that you received the prophetic word of the Lord. Or you don't want to say that you had a dreams and vision that are coming from God. Because people are going to think that something's wrong with you. Or they're going to talk about you. Be loose from that right now in the name of Jesus. God needs his voice here on the earth. He needs our hand. He needs our feet. He needs our mind. He needs our intellect. He needs you to open up your mouth and declare the things that he has given you in your time of hearing. Learn to sit quietly. Learn to listen for the voice of the Lord. So many people can tell you what the devil said. 
The devil told me to do it. It just became a joke in the world. But you never know what God said. Why is that? Because the devil floods the world with television and entertainment and people talking trash all around you. And many times we don't pull apart to hear what God is saying. Right then, God is always talking to us. God is always speaking to us. God is always leading us by his divine spirit. Father, I asked for the brokenhearted today, for their hearts to be lifted up, those who can't figure out which way to go next. Lord, for their eyes to be opened. Father, you said that you would give us dreams and vision even in our sleep. You talk to us, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let your people begin to hear, hear, hear. I speak right now the opening of your hearing, hearing, unclog, unclog. We pull in the spiritual realm, cotton out of your ear, stuffing out of your ear that you might hear. False words that have been plugged into your ear, false teaching plugged into your ear that have gone down into your heart. For the ears are a gate, and what goes into your ear goes down into your heart, into the well of your spirit. So many nasty words that were spoken to you even in your younger days. I curse them and command them to fall down out of the heavens. Have no more rule over you or your life and your children. I mean, the Lord says some of those words that were spoken have gone down on your children because you declared them over your children just like they were declared over you. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Take those foul words of cursing off of your children, off of your home, off of your money, off of your finances, off of your life, off of your body, off of your condition. Sickness is reigning in too many of your lives because you're speaking it into your life. Hear what thus said the Lord. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the God that delivereth you from all evil. I deliver you from all temptation. Believe it and receive it today. There is no temptation that is not coming to man. Because there's nothing in the world that has not been here before. God said there's nothing new under the sun. Relationships and false teaching, they've all been here. God allowed the earth to be flooded because it was overrun with false teaching, false beings, false creatures that had crept into the world. The word of God said that anything that climbs up into this earth by any other means besides the flesh, blood, and bone body. The word of God said they are a thief and a robber. Everybody's sitting around looking for aliens to come into the world and crawl into the world that God manifested. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. He said nothing can crawl up in this world unless they are a thief and a robber. So you don't need to worship them. You don't need to idolize them. You don't need to look up to them because they're not of God. Now God has his angels that are on assignment, but they will not let you worship them. They will not let you honor them. Demonic forces have crawled up and crept into the world. So many times people think they're seeing certain things and they're seeing demonstrations of demonic forces. Demonic forces directly aligned against God. To show you powerful things. To make you believe that it's God. You better hear the Lord when the Lord said flee and turn and run. Get away from some things. I've had the Lord tell me when I was about to do something that I didn't even realize was bad. I heard the Lord and the Holy Spirit scream at me and say stop Barbara. Stop me right in my tracks. 
right in my tracks for the Holy Spirit to be able to minister to me. The Holy Spirit is always with you. If you believe it today, receive. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, so many times we've run away from God and God said, come back to me. I'm married to you. I'm married to the backslider. You're mine. You still belong to me. And God is protecting us so often. But the plan of the enemy is to kill us. While we're outside of the will of God. You have to be watchful and prayerful. Hear the Lord if he tells you don't go to that picnic. Don't go to that party. Don't go in that store. Don't turn down that street. You better understand how important it is to listen to God because the Holy Spirit is continuously warning you. He's a warning come before destruction and a haughty spirit or a lifted up proud spirit before a fall. God is trying to protect you. He'll say, don't go. You know, so many times people have gotten in trouble and you almost were there. You can look back and cry at some funerals and say, man, I should have been there and I wasn't there because God protected you. He knows the plots and the plans of the enemy. He knows the strategies of the enemy. He sees them lining things up. You know, so many people I noticed during the, the, the problem that they had with the government, you saw the people that most likely were really possibly listening to the Spirit of God. Because I know there were some Christians out there. And I know there were some that came there in the name of being Christians that weren't Christians. And they came to rabble rouse. And they came to do stuff that's ungodly. They came to destroy something that God says you don't put your hand on. If you believers are believing that stuff, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. God is not the author of confusion. God is not supposedly in the name of strength going to lie. God is not going to steal. God is not going to plant bombs to hurt people. God is not going to raise up a tower to hang people. God is not going to brace feces all over the place. God is not going to do that. God is not going to break into a place in order to establish your rule. God is not unruly. God is not unseemly. And you could see the people that no doubt got warnings. They began to walk swiftly. Swiftly away from what the unction of the Holy Spirit told them to get out of here. Get out of here. This has gone way out of control. And the enemy will catch you up in things that are out of control. And guess what he catch you up to do? To destroy your name. To destroy your reputation. To destroy your ability to minister. I know a minister that I listen to often and bought his book. He is absolutely insane now. He got caught up. Caught up. Several of them. They never ever mentioned the name of the Lord or Jesus. But they're caught up in the things of this world. Don't get caught up. Listen to God. Go back and repent if you got caught up. And start afresh. Start over. God doesn't want us in dissension. God is a God of peace. And Father, I thank you today. I thank you for your word brings light. That your word brings revelation. Your word brings understanding. Father, I thank you that I choose you above any woman or man. I choose you today. The word of God say choose you this day. Who will you serve? Will you serve mammon which is money and your businesses 
and your equity, or will you serve God? Father, I thank you that you sit in your word. Above all, I wish that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul is prospering. Hear ye the words of the Lord. God is not slack concerning his promises. He said, as fathers fell asleep, all things remain the same. That's what people will say, that Jesus is not coming. He said, but concerning slackness, he says, a man shall reap what he sowed. He says, I'm not slack. I will return. And every eye shall behold the coming of the Lord. Father, I thank you for love. No one wants to take your joy from you. But we want to give you wisdom concerning the enemy putting a rope around your neck. And letting you think that you got away. And how do they do that? They feed the rope so far. They let you just run, run, run. Until you hang yourself. Father, I come against the enemy hanging the people today. Father, we thank you that we walk in wisdom. We walk in honor. We walk in glory. Lord, forgive us again. Forgive us for the thoughts of our mind. Father, let us hear you that your word may fill our hearts and that your word may fill our mind. Empower us, Lord. Give us wisdom over all of these wounds. Broken hearted, suicidal, lack of understanding. He said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Father, we cast down lack of knowledge today. Open up your eyes and see what God is trying to show you today. Father, I thank you. Father, I'm coming against right now. Will for ignorance. Willful ignorance. Knowing that you should find out stuff, but willingly remaining ignorant. I'm hearing the Lord say it will be the destruction of your soul to remain in ignorance. Father, I thank you again today for your scripture found in 1 Samuel 3 and 10. Samuel answers, speak for your servant hears the devotion of hearing. So Father, I thank you today as so often I've said for my loved ones, my friends, my family, my co-workers that are on this line, be blessed today. I hope that you receive something from this word. As I've said so often, I don't come on here to make anybody happy. Holler, hoop, shout, or dance. But to give you what God gave me in my spirit today. If you are listening to any of these podcasts, they are found on most podcast channels under Empower me, wow. Wisdom over wounds. I have several other podcasts playing simultaneously. I am promoting right now, though, the Drill Sergeant series, Making Jewels. You can find most of them under Barbara Nutt Duffy Hammonds. I put my maiden name on because my mother asked me to. And Father, I thank you today. If you come on, click like and subscribe. It would truly bless me. You can send me a thumbs up, an emoji, send me a message. But I ask you again, please be respectful to my husband, Reginald. If you say anything that's out of order, I promise you, I will not answer. So many people act like they don't realize that I am a married woman. And I love my husband. I do not want him to be offended by anything that I teach or share in the name of the Lord. So make sure you are listening to God. Make a place in your house to where you can just sit quietly 
It doesn't take long to hear what God has to say. He can speak real swiftly. So today again, if I come into your heart, remember me. I am Sister Barbara. Remember me in your prayers. And when God brings your face before me, I call out your name. Lord, help them. Whatever situation they're in, keep them and protect them from the plans of the enemy. So God bless you today. Go with God and let God lead you. Again, the devotion of hearing is the word for today. Speak, Lord, for thy servant is listening. God bless you. This is Sister Barbara. Bye.